man, guys, this stuff, it took me a while, honestly, of working with different age groups too. I recommend highly that if you can work with a, a lot of different ages and levels, it, it's so beneficial because once we get to our age, like the things that matter to us and the things that actually make us think about how we're looking at moving or how we view ourselves a lot different. Like a 15 or 16 year old kid, if his girl breaks up with him, his whole world is absolutely crushed. The guy's like sitting in the corner listening to Jodeci songs while they're crying with a candle. Any one of us, our girl leaves, we're like, yes, get out, because I'm about to go be a playboy for a little while. But the thing is, you see that it's a difference and you're working with a 15, 16 year old kid and I see it a lot like, Little tiny things will affect their overall view of how they look at themselves. And just because, huh? Yeah. It's gonna impede your ability to think. Like, and if emotion gets in, a way, in the way of your ability to think, process, reason, rationalize, fail a test, get in a car accident, break up with your girlfriend, mom yelled at you. I, I experienced all those things individually growing up, right? Like, I was a super emotional kid. I'm the only child of an Italian mother. And, she loved me way too much for my own good, still does. And like, I was this emotional train wreck. If I was 0 for 4, uh, the world ended, right? The world ended and I had to teach myself. And the reason I know it's possible, all the things that these guys are talking about, is because I literally lived them, I experienced them, I went through them. And like, you know, him and I talked about DJ a couple weeks ago and there was a, not a doubt in my mind that DJ LeMahieu was banged up last year. There was not a doubt in my mind. And I'm watching it and I'm like, Yep, he's hurt. He's got something going on. Because this guy likes, like, he, like, wakes up and it's 300. Wakes up and it's 300. Like, and if it's not 300, there's definitely a reason. Because I watched the hitter, I watched his process, I know the guy he works with, I know how intentional he is, I know how deliberate he is. But those emotions get in the way. So, like, part of our responsibility as, I call myself a hitting consigliere, I don't even like to think of myself as a coach, is, like, I have to understand that and all the dynamics, the team dynamic, the, the private dynamics, like like build a relationship with the athlete, like building relationships with your players and like understanding who they are on like a deeper level. It's like these guys are just as big a psychologist as they are as they are getting the key, to it. Is that how do you get here to tell Casey that the reason why his head is fucked up is because his girl is dating the quarterback on a football team? He's not going to say that to him unless he knows he can trust him, right? And if he does, now you got some type of connection. You go, all right, now I know the problem. That's nothing to do with mechanics. We got to get you right some other way. Gotcha. And, uh, generally speaking, the best coaches I had in my life were all guys that let me cross that threshold. Pete Fatsy is well, like, one of my best friends. He's the hitting coach for Boston Red Sox. We talked twice a week last year during the season. And it was like, dude, like, and I said this to Bobby when we first started, I was like, he's talking to me about the femoral head in the pelvis, like with the rotational axis of the occipital lobe. Or, and I'm like, bro, if you talk to another big league hitter like that, and I wasn't a big league hitter yet, but I said, I know if you talk to a hitter like that, they're gonna tell you to go pound sand. Like they're literally gonna tune you out right away. When you tell people what to do, they resent you generally. The best coaches I ever had were the guys that left me alone until I went to them and I was like, hey, what do you got on this? And like, this is all the stuff that I think Case is alluding to, we're, we're all alluding to. It's like, well, we got to get there first. And that's for some people, it might happen quickly, and for other guys, it might take longer. Right? For a player like him, a young kid, how old are you? 22. 26. So, like, no, 22. 22. <laughs> so, he, he has to play it. He has to play it. One, I thought he was. Just size, right? So, like, you're going to go through this gauntlet of coaches, right? Like, you're going to have this gauntlet of coaches. And the reason why the private hitting guy exists, the reason why Casey Smith is Casey Smith, and why, why Bobby Two Spirits became Bobby Two Spirits, because there's just this different dynamic, right? Like the team coach has to worry about the team the same way anybody runs an organization here. Like you gotta put a team ahead of the individual. So like doing both, like it's like, like you're trying to do both things and it's like, they, they're, they're two different worlds and, and the considerations, the implications of all of it. It's so, it's so, so challenging and that's why there's no there's like we don't have a perfect blueprint guys we don't have a, a perfect formula there's no like hey do this there's no magic pill for everyone it's like you gotta get in the trenches you gotta you gotta go earn that trust and like I think all of us are passionate about wanting to like bridge that gap and like just literally build tools that like help people do that because I don't like 
I literally called Casey the other day. I was like, hey, I need something for this guy. Like, I need, I need something. Take a look at this. Tell me what you got. He, you know, we, him and I, we had, we had done it for one of his guys. And, like, it's just, I, it doesn't matter if it comes from me. Like, I don't, I don't give a shit. Like, I don't care. I, I literally don't care. I want what's best for him. I want this 22-year-old kid to accomplish all his hopes and dreams. And he's going to give, if you give him effort and energy, he's going to give it right back. That's how I am. I, I mean, like, when, when a kid gives me something, like, hey, shit, I'm in the cage for four hours and the kid didn't pay me a dime. I don't, I mean, whatever, it doesn't matter. Like, you guys have any, any kind of question or examples or stuff you're working on, anything to ask Case, feel free to do it because that's why we're here and stuff like that. Yeah, any questions at all? And then um, after that, yeah, what you got? I got you. Uh, so you, this is like super refreshing. Uh, when you're, you're, we always say we want to meet them where they're at. Right. So when we're you're meeting them where they're at and you have a question like that, like, hey, man, like what is important to you as a hitter? And he says something like, oh, I'll stay inside the ball. And you say, hey, what's that mean to you? We have an issue, especially in youth, where it's just over coaching. They say all the key words. They have no clue what any of it means. And it, it becomes confusing. And they say to you, like, hey, I don't know. Or I think it means this or well, what I was told before. It means this. And it's like, well, it has no meaning to you. What do you do from there? So from there, I give them, depending on what the, the, the two that I hear all the time are, hands inside the ball, stay back. Okay, that's it. It's, and so I'll ask six of them at a time, because we hit in group, in group lessons. I have four coaches, six hitters, um, and I'll, I'll pull all six hitters together and go, what do you think stay back means? What do you think stay back means? And I'll ask all of them, and I'll get five or six different answers. Okay, and so what I'll do is I'll go, this is my definition of what it means for me. Okay, doesn't mean it's right, this is just how I define it. Okay, and then I'll show them kind of what we're trying to accomplish from a mechanical standpoint, and I'll go, stay back to me might mean go forward to you. Because like first thought, stay back for me means I'm keeping my rear heel anchored, staying behind my front side, and right? I'm not weakened. Stay back to a lot of guys is their body weight's already back here, and they're sitting. Okay, so, when, and I'll go, look, when I'm telling you to do this, this is what it means, and so they have a definition of what the terminology and what they'll do is they'll go oh okay and now they actually have some tangible substance behind instead of keep your hands inside and nobody's ever explained what it means i want to give them a definition i want to be a dictionary for my own terminology dummy is right it's just when we're in the cages we're talking about it and you hear me say this this is what it means now here's what i take a step farther i'll go when your high school coach says this this is what you're doing wrong, and this is what he's trying to get you to do. Think this. Instead of, well, my coach is screwing my swing up because he's telling me to stay inside, you're telling me to get the head out, and I'll go, look, this is your swing flaw. I see it, and so does your high school coach. Your high school coach is trying to fix it by saying this. When he says that, use that as your trigger to make it your own feel. So if it's, hey, when I'm going this way, I've just got to think right center. I don't need to think about my hands. And so what I try to do is play like in between. I want to like push the high school kid and the high school coach apart from each other. And go, hey guys, we're both on the same team here. Like stop button heads, all right? And so that way, instead of them arguing with the coach or the coach is telling me something wrong, it's like, hey man, he sees the same thing I do, just saying it a little bit different, all right? Let his words trigger your own thoughts that we've worked on over here. You're going to bang. He's going to be happy. He's going to leave you alone. And he's going to go, see, that's the way to stay inside the ball. And he's going to go, ah, whatever, but I'm still raking, so who cares? Okay. One of the things to keep in mind also, and what Chris and Bobby, I love when they talk about this stuff because they always say that um, different fields, that when we make adjustments on guys, fields have these expiration dates. Right. Right, Chris? And so, like, we'll see, some, we'll see a hitter that's lunging in the game. And, 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 he, and he's constantly, he feels a ton of pitch pressure because he's like lunging at balls and coming off his backside, right? And, he, and then he's getting jammed and just completely fist bumped and blown up, right? Excuse my language. And so what's the fix, right? Now he's, he's, Casey has said to him, all right, you're going to make sure your back heel stays planted for as long as possible. You're not worried about anything else. Just keep your back heel planted for as long as possible throughout your swing. And that might work. That might be a fix. And then the dude starts raking in the game. 10th of his game, like, man, that works. And all of a sudden, he just loses it one day again, right? So 
Is that the feel, or was it some dude that was just cutting it loose and he just was dealing with everybody? And that's where the confusion comes in with hitters. When do I start going back to the mechanical adjustments? When do I stick to the different? When do I change a different feel for the guy? That that definitely takes some 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 thought. So Chavis is the best example, and I'll talk about Chavis because he's my little brother. Basically, I've known him since he was ten years old, and CC has a real good relationship with him as well. Um, as far as like talking through feels and the mindset of a big league hitter, like. I literally talk to Mike every day. And one of the things that both of us as a coach and as a player have to work on is have a bad game, don't look at the swing. Like, stop it, forget it. Because Mike is very, very aware of his body. He's very aware of his swing. He's an incredibly knowledgeable hitter. He's very talented. To a fault, he gets he's over-conscious of what he's doing in his swing. And if he doesn't do well, and this is more so when he was a younger player, he's been in the big leagues a little bit longer, he's starting to mature. But it would be why well, Chad Green just threw 99 up and in under my letters and I didn't get there. What's wrong with my swing? I'm like, nothing. Stop swinging at that. Like, <laughs> you're not going to hit that. Nobody hits that. Why? Well, I should be able to cover that. No, you shouldn't. All right? You're a rookie in the big leagues. You think you can hit everything. You can't. And it's understanding, and, and we've talked about this. I talked about this with Josh. There's also going to be times with hitters, and I'm, I'm so glad you brought like. There are gonna be flaws in swings that play. Leave them alone, okay? Leave them alone, all right? If we get so focused on making the swing look right on the video that we remove the hitter's confidence and ability to feel athletic in the box, they're gonna suck. They're gonna hit worse. Josh has a little bit of slack in his swing, okay? It used to be way worse. We cleaned it up to where it was a point where now it really plays against high velo, but guess what? It still shows up a little bit, all right? Well, for him, his adjustment is learning what pitches expose his slack and how to take them. Instead of trying to make his body do something that it will not do, because it's been doing it the same way for 27 years, all right? We're gonna refine it and we're gonna make him the best version of himself and then allow his approach of pitch selection to play to his swing instead of trying to create this perfect looking swing that, okay, that's it. That's what it's supposed to do, but it doesn't play. Because when he's like that, he's stiff, he's rigid, he's unathletic, he can't adjust, all right? So don't get so obsessed with the swing looking absolutely perfect because you start to, to go away from a hitter's natural ability and you start to remove their confidence, which I said is, is everything. Guys, have you guys seen that, like, that one catchphrase that on, on, on social media, they'll say like,